So you want to be an agency electrician. Now, some say it's a bad thing, some say it's a good thing. I'm right down the middle. Um, there's a stigma attached to it. Know that. If you're an agency electrician, people go, oh, he's obviously not good enough to be direct. Doesn't always have to be that. So that negativity aside, what do you need to do to become an agency electrician? Number one, you've got to register um, a way of getting uh, of your employment status. So you need to register your employment status one way or another. Now, you can be a PAYE agency electrician. Essentially, you go on one of the schemes called an umbrella scheme or an umbrella method of getting paid. You have to pay your own national insurance, you have to pay your own um, employer's national insurance, and you have to pay to get paid. So it's about 20 quid um, a week, um, and all those deductions usually add up to anywhere between 50 and 70 pounds a week in deductions, on top of your tax as well. That is wholly unacceptable in my opinion, and I tend to stay away from that. One of the plus sides of that is you don't have to worry about tax returns and you don't have to worry about um, tax bills or anything like that. It's You're basically working a job. Um, it's basically a zero hours contract to sum it up, but an expensive one. The second way is CIS, Construction Industry Scheme. Contact the HMRC. They will set you up a um, unique tax reference number. And that will allow you to work as a sole trader. Um, you're not a limited company. You're not a director of a company. You are just Sam McDool um, or Joe Bloggs working in the construction industry as a sole trader. Now, that is my preferred method. Yes, you have to pay to get paid, which is anywhere between... 15 and 25 pound a week which again is unacceptable but what it does do for you and the, the, here's the pro for it you don't have to put your tax aside so it's stopped at source your tax and your and your national insurance are stopped at source um just your national insurance not your employer's national insurance that's not a thing with cis so your deductions weekly will be anywhere between 15 and 25 pound a week um that's my preferred method um you also get if you do a tax return at the end of the year which you will have to do um you can get a tax return which is sorry you could get yeah you could get paid out off your tax return some people get as much as five grand drop into their account that, that where they've overpaid their tax um to be honest with you, my accountant likes to be quite by the by the by the book. Um, I usually get anywhere between fifteen and three grand, fifteen hundred pound and three grand. Now, what you need to understand is, I use an accountant because I'm an electrician. Same as he's an accountant. If he has an electrical problem, he calls me. It just takes the strain away. It costs about three hundred quid a year, and they take it from your. Um, your tax return do that it just takes the strain off there's some smart people out there that can do both you know let them do that but my advice would be get an accountant um, if you're going to do CIS now the third way is um, you go limited you go company's house you set up your um, limited company and you work as a limited company you don't have any deductions but you do have to put your tax aside for the end of the year generally speaking um and you'll need an accountant for that it's more expensive to have an accountant to do that um but there's also other benefits you can put a lot of your tools and stuff like that um and your clothes and there's loads of little tax tax not fiddles but you know ways of putting expenses through your business that that's quite good um but you do have to save up your tax to pay at the end of the year and i'm way way too irresponsible for that um also don't listen to anything i say i am stupid so i'm only telling you what's in my brain whether it's right or wrong i, I can't verify that for you step two get your ecs card so to get on any site 
um, you need an ECS card as an electrician. If you're just a, a builder, um, labourer, you use CSCS. If you're an electrician, use ECS. You go and get your ECS card. It's a basic qualification. It's a multiple choice um, qualification with like a 60% pass rate. I've never revised for it. And like I say, I'm stupid. Um, and I still pass every time. So you do that. Now you can get your ECS card if you've got no qualifications whatsoever. It just means you get a labourer's card. Um, and if the sites run correctly, it means all you'll be doing is labouring. But it gives you a feel for site life and whether it's a, whether it's something you want to do. Um, that's what I did when I very first started. And I was so excited by the whole idea of building containment and you know becoming an electrician. It inspired me to go on and get my gold card. So the ECS is a card scheme. It's called the Electrotechnical Certification Scheme. And they issue cards based on your level of qualifications. Um, the most of the cards are white cards, and they will have your um, your designation on it. So whether you're a labourer, trainee, an apprentice, um, you know, adult learner, a lot of it will be on the card in big black letters. Now, the gold card is what you get when you've done all your qualifications and you can be certified as a gold card electrician. And that is your Willy Wonka's ticket to earning up between 150 and 250 pound a day as an electrician in and around London. That is the desired goal or should be the desired goal of anyone getting into the electrical trade. Um, do that. Always, always have that as your primary goal in life. If you're going to get into the electrical trade, into the agency circuit, if you like, make that your goal. Make that your goal. Put everything to get in that because life becomes so much easier after that. You'll get more work. You'll get paid better. Um, and I just, I personally think it's it's the uh, it's the best move I've ever made in my life. Now, number three, phone up agencies. Um, there's loads and loads of agencies, possibly thousands of agencies in the UK. Um, and just because they're not in London doesn't mean to say they don't recruit for London. So phone up agencies, register with them. Generally, you will need a CV, which is easy to do, you know, um, and you will need a copy of your birth certificate, driving license or passport. And you will need um, a copy of your ECS card just to verify that you've got the stuff they need to get you on site and that you're eligible to work in the UK. Um, with agencies, what I will say is there's a lot of there's a lot of negativity around agencies and the fact that you know they are se they are selling us into a trade and then taking money off our backs. It's the easiest way to get work. There's an alternative, and this is the alternative I chose to take a few years ago. I became my own agency. Now, not officially, but what I did was I found a list of companies that I wanted to work for, or a list of electrical companies that work in the commercial and industrial sector. And I went and I started phoning around and I made contacts within all of those and I logged all the data. So if I phoned up, I don't know, Bob at Greenback Electrical. At least I wrote down Bob at Greenback Electrical. I phoned him on this day. Um, I'll give it a month. I phoned him back. You know, and now I've got a whole list of people I've worked for or people I want to work for. And I don't have to rely solely on agencies. As with anything, the success of that list relies entirely on the amount of effort you put into it. So... If you're not as confident as I am to pick up the phone and make these phone calls, then, you know, use an agency. That's what they're there for. It's a it's a service at the end of the day. Now, number four, tools. If you're a basic labourer, still turn up with tools. You can go and get a, a basic toolkit from somewhere like Screwfix for 35, 40 quid um, and an 18 volt drill for less than 100 quid. It's good practice. You want to be you want to be stand out from the other people. You want to be taken on. You want that phone call 
you want those companies to phone you instead of phoning the agency then turn up correct turn up in a pair of workers trousers not with holes in not with holes in your boots just turn up like looking all right and i promise you you'll stand out from the crowd and you turn up be diligent put in a good day's work um, you don't have to like you don't have to be the hardest working person in the room what you have to do is be consistent turn up five days do your job and 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 go home with a smile on your face and before you know it you won't be working for agencies the companies will be phoning you that is my top tips for becoming an agency worker i'm out